Today's video is my side-by-side -side comparison of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro versus the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Pro. I've been using the Yoga Slim 7 Pro for a good 5-6 months now and it's really been my favorite laptop for a very long time. I've only been using the IdeaPad 5 Pro for about three weeks now, but uh, I'm beginning to like it quite a lot and I think I have a pretty good idea about how to compare the two devices and choose which one I like the best. The specification I have of the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is actually the Intel version, so that's the Slim 7i Pro if you should be completely correct. This is with the i5 1135G7, 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD. The specification I have of the IdeaPad 5 Pro is the AMD Ryzen 7 5800U CPU. This is with integrated graphics, 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD. These laptops have a lot of similarities to them. They have a very similar quality feel. They have great screens, great keyboards and trackpads. They have USB-C charging and two USB-C ports, both of them. They also have almost exactly the same weight, but they also have a few differences to them that make them a bit different devices from each other. I've been using them in my office with my triple screen setup there. I've been using them on the go when I'm out on train rides to Stockholm and in my room there with my mobile monitor setups, as well as when video editing and for an occasional gaming session here and there. Let's take a look at the differences when looking at the outsides of these laptops. Starting off with the palm rest areas, they are very similar between the two devices. The keyboards are also very similar and you're gonna hear the differences between them when I do the click test a little bit later. The trackpads are different. As you can see, the Yoga Slim 7 Pro have quite a significantly bigger trackpad. However, the IdeaPad 5 Pro, I've never figured has a too small trackpad either. So I think they are both completely fine in this regard. As you can see here, the IdeaPad 5 Pro have a bit of a grill on top. That lets a little bit of sound out from the top area. But even though it has those grills up there, I will have to say that the speakers are a bit better on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. The power button on the IdeaPad 5 Pro is up here on the right hand side, where it on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is on the side there. The quality feel of both of these laptops is really good. However, the quality of the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is a few notches above the IdeaPad 5 Pro. Mainly, that is because the bezel around the screen is plastic in the IdeaPad 5 Pro, when it's glass on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. Also, the bezel up top here in the corner is giving a bit of weight and making a bit of a clicky noise when you're pushing it in. That is only for my unit, but nonetheless, that is way more of a lower quality feel for me personally. Except that, I think they are pretty similar in quality feel. Both the palm rest, the area on the top and the bottom feel very high quality and it's all metal chassis except the part on the bezel in the IdeaPad 5 Pro. Closing both the machines and taking a look at the outside here, you can see that the IdeaPad 5 Pro has the more subtle branding of the two. It only comes with the Lenovo logo down here, where the Yoga Slim 7 Pro comes with both the Lenovo logo up top here and the Yoga logo that is right there. Now you have to ignore these magnetic plates that I have on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. Those are from my external monitor, so of course they are not there when you buy the laptop from the beginning. In the bottom here, we have a pretty similar setup, although the openings for the fans and air intake look a little bit different. Uh, the main difference here, I think, is that the speaker grills are quite a bit smaller on the IdeaPad 5 Pro. When looking at the thickness here, you can see that the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is quite a bit thinner, all in all. However, the difference is not that big, and you can see that when looking in this direction or when taking a look at the back side like this. This is not something that I see as a huge difference, but there is a little bit of difference to it, if the most important thing for you is how slim the laptop is. The biggest difference in terms of form factor is otherwise that the Yoga Slim 7 has more square corners, 
and the IdeaPad 5 Pro has very rounded corners. Which you like the best and prefer is very much a personal preference. I don't think there's any big difference in using this different type of forms in the corners. On the left hand side, in the IdeaPad 5 Pro, we have a USB-C port, an HDMI port, another USB-C port and then the headphone microphone combo jack. This is the Intel version of the Yoga Slim 7 Pro, so this has two Thunderbolt ports. If you're getting the AMD version, it has two USB-C ports, but both of them are fully fledged. So there is both power, there is data transfer, and there is display port in the two ports. This goes for the IdeaPad 5 Pro as well. Both of the ports are fully fledged with both data, power, and display port out. However, I did have a bit of trouble with using the USB-C ports for DisplayPort out. Mainly that's in cases where the monitor I plug into needs both power and DisplayPort signal. This is not working very well at all, where on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro it has been working perfect for me. On the right hand side, in the IdeaPad 5 Pro, you got a full size SD card reader, together with two USB-A ports. And on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro, you have a headphone microphone combo jack together with a USB-A port. So this is a clear win for the IdeaPad 5 Pro in terms of the ports in total. Let's see if the laptops can be opened with one hand. As you can see, that is no problem. And uh, now I'm standing a bit away from them, but they also both log in with Windows Hello, which is working really well with the infrared webcam. And as soon as it recognizes the face, it will log you into Windows when you open it up. The displays of these machines are very interesting and also very similar, but at the same time a bit different. They both have a good Quad HD resolution. They both have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. They both have good brightness, the IdeaPad 5 Pro around 350 nits and the Yoga Slim 7 Pro around 400 nits. The colors are around 100% sRGB and they have very little backlight bleed. The difference mainly is that the IdeaPad 5 Pro has a matte display when the Yoga Slim 7 Pro has a glossy display. This affects quite a lot, especially if you are doing a lot of outdoor work, where a glossy display will be much harder to see, even if you crank the brightness up. Also because it's very prone to reflections, you tend to want to crank the brightness up in the Yoga Slim 7 Pro, which in turn affects battery life quite a bit. These models can be had with a bunch of different screen configurations, and my IdeaPad 5 Pro has a 60Hz panel, when my Yoga Slim 7 Pro has a 90Hz panel. This is something that affects the use of the monitors, especially when it comes to gaming. I don't think 90Hz is necessary in any other cases than for gaming, so I usually keep my Yoga Slim 7 Pro at the 60Hz setting and then only switch it over to 90 if I'm gonna play some games. Let's have a listen for coil wine in both of these machines. There is no coil wine at all from any of the machines and there is no idle fan noise at all. These are both running in such a silent state that you can barely tell that they are on the way that I have them right now. In this idle state, the CPU temperature of the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is around 33 degrees. In this idle state in the IdeaPad 5 Pro, the CPU temperature is also 33 degrees. Both of these laptops are really good when it comes to keeping themselves cool. The Intel i5 that I have in my model of Yoga Slim 7 is significantly weaker and has less cores than the AMD 5800U that I have in my IdeaPad 5 Pro. However, the AMD is able to really cool itself well and I'm very impressed by the temperatures both in load and when idle in both of these laptops. It's really never been an issue to me at any point. The overall Windows experience is great in both of these machines. This is something that I value a lot because I mainly use them for productivity tasks. So just having a smooth experience in Windows is something that is of huge importance. I've been using them for both productivity tasks as well as a bit of media consumption and gaming. And I think all of these use cases work great with both of the laptops. I find that the gaming experience is a little bit better because I have the 90Hz panel in the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. But the IdeaPad 5 Pro 
is also available with a 90Hz panel, so that's only due to my configurations. Here is a typing test of the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. And here is a typing test of the IdeaPad 5 Pro. I think there is a bit of difference between these two keyboards, but it's a little bit hard to put your finger at what the difference is. The keys of the IdeaPad 5 Pro are a little bit more matte to the touch compared to the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. They also feel a little bit clickier, although I'm not sure if that is because I've spent about 5 months using the Yoga Slim 7 Pro and I just received the IdeaPad. So maybe this is just because of how new the keyboard is and that the switches sort of ease up a little bit after some use. They both have backlight, which can be adjusted by pressing Fn and space. As with most Lenovo laptops, the difference in the different backlight levels is not that big. So I personally don't think that it makes that much difference if you use a different level. It's basically just on or off for me. The trackpad of the IdeaPad 5 Pro has been working really well for me with all the different use cases I've had for it. It doesn't rattle. And it is big enough for my personal use cases. It has a good tracking feel to it and gestures work the way they should. The trackpad of the Yoga Slim 7 Pro has also been working really well. It is a little bit bigger than the IdeaPad 5 Pro, but it's not something that I have been disturbed by. Nonetheless, something that I feel is a very big good thing. I feel that it's pretty neutral between these two sizes. The one thing that is disturbing with my Yoga Slim 7 Pro is that the trackpad is rattling a bit when you are soft clicking it. That gives a little bit less quality feel to this machine as a whole. Both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth works excellent in both of the devices. However, I did have a few hiccups with the Wi-Fi connection on the IdeaPad 5 Pro where it was kind of throttling the speed for some times when I was using it with my router where I live in Stockholm. When testing them here in my office, I get a download speed of 60.73 megabits per second on the IdeaPad 5 Pro. I get an upload speed of 55 megabytes and I get a response time of 26.5 milliseconds. On the Yoga Slim 7 Pro, I get a download speed of 63.17, an upload speed of 70 and a response time of 11.4. And this is a huge difference in response time, which doesn't really make sense when being on the same network. So this is also pointing me in the direction to think that the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card is a little bit better in the Yoga Slim 7 Pro compared to the IdeaPad 5 Pro. Let's talk a bit about upgradability. Both of these laptops are not the strongest contenders when it comes to upgradability. You have the opportunity to upgrade the SSD, but there is no slot for an extra SSD like there is, for example, in the regular Yoga Slim 7. The RAM is soldered onto the motherboard in both of the units. However, it is a different RAM depending on what configuration you choose. My Yoga Slim 7 is the Intel i5 and it comes with an LPDDR4X RAM with 4266 MHz clock speed. My IdeaPad 5 Pro is the AMD 5800U version. This comes with a DDR4 3200MHz RAM. They are both running in dual channel and that goes for all the different sizes of memory. The Intel versus AMD discussion here is pretty interesting. I find it really hard to decide a winner between these different SKUs that are available of these different laptops. I have the i5 with the XE graphics. The IdeaPad 5 Pro is available with an i7 with MX450 graphics at a similar price level to what I paid for my Yoga Slim 7 Pro. I think i7 1165G7 together with an Nvidia MX450 is probably the better spec of all of these ones. The graphics of the AMD 5800U wasn't impressing me that much, especially not for gaming. They do an okay job to deliver 60fps in medium graphics and a little bit lower render scale, 
but MX450 will truly be the superior graphics card in this kind of machine. The XE graphics on the i5 model I have here also do a pretty good job of pushing out frames in games. However, it also has Thunderbolt 4, so you can plug into an external GPU and run it at much higher frame rates together with the 90Hz screen that it comes with. I'm not gonna dig too deep into performance in this review, because there are so many different SKUs available of these two machines. I think that it's better you take a look at my full reviews that I will be linking down in the description below if you want the more performance stats and benchmarks of my different units that I have here. These are the speakers of the IdeaPad 5 Pro. I wanted to make sure to strike while the iron is hot and sit down and talk a little bit about my feelings around the new MacBook Pros that were released yesterday at Apple's event. It's been roughly three years since I stopped using my previous MacBook Pro and then decided to switch over to start using Windows. And I've actually been pretty happy about this transition. These are the speakers of the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. I wanted to make sure to strike while the iron is hot and sit down and talk a little bit about my feelings around the new MacBook Pros that were released yesterday at Apple's event. It's been roughly three years since I stopped using my previous MacBook Pro and then decided to switch over to start using Windows. And I've actually been pretty happy about this transition. It's not easy to tell a winner, but when maxing the volume out, I think the Yoga Slim 7 Pro has a bit of a clearer sound in total. Even though the IdeaPad 5 Pro has those grills on the top that really push out a little bit of the audio from the top as well. I prefer the audio of the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. This is an example of the video and mic quality from the webcam. This is a well-lit room, but it's not perfect daylight. It is only light coming from the lamps above me. And uh, I think that the webcam quality is pretty bad in both the laptops, but putting them side by side like this, it's very clear that the Yoga Slim 7 Pro has a much more sharp webcam. It's not great by any means, but at least it's a little bit better than the IdeaPad 5 Pro. This is an example of the video and mic quality from the webcam. This is a well-lit room, but it's not perfect daylight. It is only light coming from the lamps above me. And uh, I think that the webcam quality is pretty bad in both the laptops, but putting them side by side like this, it's very clear that the Yoga Slim 7 Pro has a much more sharp webcam it's not great by any means, but at least it's a little bit better than the IdeaPad 5 Pro. That is it for my side-by-side -side comparison of the Yoga Slim 7 Pro versus the IdeaPad 5 Pro. This is a very interesting comparison to make, and it's relatively hard to select a winner. Basically, I think if you are going to buy one of these laptops, and you can live with not having the perfect USB-C compatibility, like I had some issues with USB-C ports with my mobile monitors. The price to performance to weight ratio of the IdeaPad 5 Pro with all of its ports, I think really makes this a superior device. At only around 900 euros, it is such a value for money package and it's really hard to beat on the laptop market right now. However, when I do my test where I have both of them available and see which one I tend to gravitate towards in the morning when going to work, it is pretty much always the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. And the reason for that is still that this is a laptop that just works for everything I'm doing. I have some issues with this thing and there are also a few quality control issues like the bit of uh, loose bezel around the screen. This guy doesn't have that and the ports work just the way that they're supposed to for all my different use cases. So even though the IdeaPad 5 Pro is cheaper and more powerful, at least when it comes to CPU power, I still tend to lean towards the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. What do you think? Which device would you pick out of the two? And which SKU would you pick? There are Intel versions and AMD versions in both of them. And there are dedicated graphics and only internal graphics as well. Let me know down in the comments below and let's have a great discussion about these two awesome laptops. And then I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye bye.